Tech Talk Tuesday, number 130 today, y'all. Number 130. Let's see who's checking in here. Let me see y'all's name. See your name on here. Come on. Line up. I think it's 5 o'clock in Tennessee, and it's 6 o'clock in Eastern Time, and it's uh, tomorrow way over there. Hey, Matt. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Peter, Alan, great to see y'all, man. Charlie, Emerson, it's like setting a clock with Charlie there. Hey, Cash, Ben, Kevin, that's the guy right there who knows what flywheel inertia is, Kevin. I see a picture of a flywheel in my mind. I ain't talking about no lightweight flex plate either. I'm talking about some massive flywheel and inertia how about that inertia that's not a bad thing to be known for is it if you were all about inertia that would be a good thing bradford ed hey ed larry good good to see you guys names pop up on there great stuff uh david and daryl john hey my friend i got some good news on you the other day i hope it continues uh, I got a few folks signed up. I want to tell you a couple things that uh, I noticed. I get some messages and questions every week, and it's interesting to me that we assume you guys, you know, my my five Fs, my 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 faith, my friends, my family, my uh, followers, and my frenemies. You know, so it seems like some of you guys. <laughs> I see you, Kevin. So you know, some of you guys don't know that I'm retired. Yes, I am retired. I, I don't have a shop anymore. Um, the Star Racing name is, is being carried on and on. Jackie and I are, and Julie helps a couple times a week, but we are, we are selling a few things that were secret back in the day. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Don. Greg, I just, you know, it's, um, when I say I'm, when I retired from my job at Star Racing, I didn't retire from loving technical conversations. I love tech talk. I love, this is 130 weeks in a row I've done tech. I had to look down and make sure I'm saying it right. It seems like they sort of blend all together. Hey, Ben. Hey, Curtis. Hey, Josh. Uh, Donald, thank you for checking in again. Yeah, I mean, I've got a great man cave going together. I call the new place Man Cave 2.0. I will put some videos up this week. Uh, we bought a 40 by 60 building is uh, lined and insulated, and we put a smaller building inside of the building so I could heat and air condition it so I'd have room, you know, to mess on maybe one car at a time in some um, uh, environment, uh, controlled environment, heat and air, and then, of course, two motorcycle lifts because I have some motorcycles because I am passionate about that. And um, But I, my, my sales, I want to tell you guys, thank you. Hey, Rick. Hey, Jason. I want to tell you guys, Warren. Brad, thank you. Ronnie, I wanted to tell you guys, thank you all for following along. Thank you for keeping the product line going. Uh, the camshaft sales are doing good. Um, it was a long time coming. I didn't realize that when we were building engines for people and working on individual projects all along that some of the, we always ordered custom cams, special camshafts to suit each design. And at the end of the day, we came up with three really popular of the camshafts. And it makes sense. Automotive, uh, motorcycle, every kind of racing, every kind of engine, a four-stroke engine that has camshafts in it, you need a small, medium, and a large. You need something for everyday driving. You need one for slightly or mildly modified, and then you need one for more all out. You know, uh, no holds barred. I call it full race. So we have our 3030 cam, which I named after the um, the the engineer Zora Arcus Duntov that was the granddaddy of the Corvettes, and he had his own camshaft named after him. Hey, Chris. Hey, Alex. And then, of course, I named Gino. I named uh, the three-quarter cam because of the old famous, when the guy comes by with his car chopping him, cha 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 you say, man, that thing must have a three-quarter cam in it. And that was old school from the 60s and 70s. And then, of course, the full race cam is easy to call it the full race cam. So, hey, Matt. But those are still uh, pretty fair and, and there, there's a few companies that have camshafts. They have one for a stock style engine where you bolt in parts and it makes a lot of power. And then you got one for mildly or medium modified engines. And then you got one for kind of an all out. So it's, 
it's it's three and uh, there there's a there's camshafts in between i mean yeah you need them a, a small and a and a and an extra small or maybe a medium and then you might need a medium or or a medium well and then you need like a a, a not so burnt well done but you need a almost full race cam so there's a lot of models in between and i know i'm rambling about it but i wanted to tell you i we didn't do that we picked out the three that made the most power on the most combinations and i was going to share a little bit of the numbers and why and what it does to the dyno curve and what it does to you with the engine now please you guys are car guys there's lots of automotive guys there's lots of uh motorcycle guys with lots of of engines builders, you know, turbos, supercharged, there's all kind of engine builders. But this information, all of this stuff applies to every kind of engine. And when I say every kind of engine, I'm talking about medium wheel. That's right, Brian. That's a good one. Ian, it's uh, it's still the same um, for, for all four-stroke engines because there, when 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 uh, I'm going to talk about lobe centers, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you figure that and the opening and closing numbers and where that where they come from and what they mean and how we can compare some of that stuff. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys that signed up. Um, yeah, Schmedium, that's right, and Charles and Josh and Jero. I I'm reading a few names and I just want to say thank you. But I'm going to switch to the board so we can talk about the meat and potatoes of this four-stroke engine. Please, if you've got one cylinder, two cylinders, three cylinders, four cylinders, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, how many ever cylinders you got? Every one of them is a single cylinder engine in its own right. A V6 has six cylinders, and they're all got their own individual needs and and necessary tuning to make the engine complete, even if it's got a common crankshaft for all the cylinders, if it's an eight or four. Hayabusa, Kawasaki, Suzuki, whatever you got, Honda, Yamaha, all of those engines are several single cylinder engines connected. A V8, still eight cylinders. All right, let's change over to the board. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's try and hope this works great. First thing, let's move over here and let's talk about where we are today. Let me tighten this up. There we go. Tech Talk Tuesday. T, T, T. That's for Tech Talk Tuesday. Eh, 130 times. It's kind of gotten a little long-winded, but some guys really love, for, love it. I love it. I love doing it every week. I love sharing this stuff with you guys, and I love... Uh, telling you 130 weeks in a row. I'm in my third year of this, 2022. I have to remember that year, 2022. Thank you all for watching. Also, I am very thankful of my opportunity, so I always put my cross. And if you ever wondered why that's there, um, but that's the reason. All right, I'm going to go over here to the camshafts real quick, and I'm going to break it down to... This is the first grind I was telling you about, the 3030. This is for a Milwaukee 8. 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. The 30, 30 camshaft for the Milwaukee 8. This is for, these numbers make sense. It's a 213 degree duration at 50 thou lift on the intake and a 243 degree duration on the exhaust. It has a 98 lobe center on the intake and a 106 lobe center on the exhaust. The intake valve at 50 thou lift opens at 8 degrees before top to center and closes at 25 after. This is a really short duration cam, really low overlap. It traps a lot of air early in the range. If you put this style cam and these tuning numbers, or not these these opening and closing events, into a two-valve engine where it had one intake valve and one exhaust valve, it would really make a lot of power at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 RPM. It would run out of air early because the reason it works so great in the Milwaukee 8 is because it has four really big valves. It has two intake valves, two exhaust valves, and it breathes so good so early in the intake stroke that you don't even have to open the intake valve till eight degrees before top dead center. That's pretty cool. Then I'll go over here to this modified engine. Now this is like a, a 124 kit or say a 128 or a 131 kit. There's some guys using a 4400 piston with a 4375 stroke, which gives you a 133 engine. This camshaft shines like the brightest LED you've ever seen in that package because it has 585 lift versus the 
303485 lift has 100 thou more lift. It still only opens at 10 before top, but it closes at 42. See how late we were 25, now we're 42. We're trapping the air later in the intake stroke. Also, it has 117 degrees duration, I mean, lobe center on the exhaust and 106 intake lobe center, intake lobe center and exhaust lobe center. The exhaust opens at 64 before bottom and closes at 10. So this is also only 20 degrees overlap. So very short overlap camshaft. Now, going to the duration, we went from 213 duration to 232 on the intake and from 243 to 254 duration. This is for a modified engine like a Milwaukee 8. Please understand, if you wrote down all of these numbers for a V8, this would be more likely what you would see in a, in a, a four-cylinder that had a four valve or a real low rpm v8 with the um less than perfect flow but back to the 3030 i want to add this is for stock valve springs if you want to run bigger springs you can but the stock valve springs handle this and love this and this engine runs from 2000 rpm to 5000 5500 rpm no problem so it fits inside the stock rev limiter package and it'll go cross country no trouble this one's a little bit more aggressive but it will last for a long long time there are people running cross country everywhere with this cam because if you've got a big engine like a the new screaming eagle 128 or the 131 this is this camshaft right here is perfect for that and it will go all day everywhere you go you need Hot Rod Springs, Screaming Eagle Springs, you need our springs, you need the PSI springs that can handle up to 585 and more on lift. And I'll talk about how important that is in a minute. The last thing on my, while I'm doing my camshaft commercial, <laughs> which I feel shameless with that, but the reason I'm doing it, and I'll explain it in a minute, uh, let's finish with the full race cam. This is our 615 full race. Okay, this thing right here is like a maximum effort. The guys that are going the fastest in the country or in the world with Milwaukee 8s, uh, like Mark Fricke and, and Scott over at uh, Tommaso and the, over at his shop over there. At, um, I saw where A1 had one going really fast over, and, um, and th those guys over at um, all those shops that are going nines now, this is the camshaft of choice. Not everybody, but it's the camshaft of choice for the guys that are running these. Uh, Darren Sheffer's got it, uh, Stanley Gardner, and, um, and those guys over at GRC, Cullen Gillis and those guys. There's a bunch of people love this camshaft because it has 40 overlap, which is from 4,000 RPM and up. It has a 52-degree closing at 50,000 lift. And it has a 20 opening on the intake and a 68 opening on the exhaust. That gives us 252 degrees duration, which sounds not very much for a full race setup. But please understand, with really big valves, four of them per cylinder, two intakes and two exhausts, that's really big duration. This is almost pro stock duration for a four valve engine like NHRA pro stock Suzuki. A 252 and a 268 would almost be 13,000 RPM for a pro stocker. Whereas with this big boring stroke on a Milwaukee 8, this ends up being really middle of the road stuff for say 3,000 RPM and up. This package works really good. Uh, I was trying to think of some, oh, absolutely the best springs you can find. You need the ones that will go down to coil bind as close as you can get and be able to get this in at 615. You are entering at your own risk if you buy this cam and put it in with the SNS. Uh, roller rocker arms with the with the big um, I guess it goes up to 1.64 rocker ratio instead of the 1.60 or 1.61 rocker ratio of a stock Milwaukee 8 and I'm sorry there's a couple guys texting me and calling me right now but I can't answer while I'm doing tech talk but hey that's life I got to choose to do this for a little while and uh, I'm going to do that instead of mess with the phone right now. All right, so back to the, it looks like, here's my cam, shameless camshaft commercial. This could have been with any brand. It just so happened I have the small, medium, and large in stock at my place here. So I, I got this, the 3030 cam works great in your 107 unbelievable power gains. Let me say this. Let's, let's, let's just change this over for a second. I want to, this is a typical moonshine install this cam and tuned it in a 114. They ended up with 122 horsepower at 5,600. With this 3030 stock engine, we went from, uh, say, 80 horse to 122, 
it went from 110 foot-pounds to 133 foot-pounds. And you can see how nice the torque curve looks and how nice the RPM curve looks. And this is with, uh, when I say a stock 114 Milwaukee 8, I'm talking about the same spark plugs that rocker covers did not come off. The um, They put a header on it and they put a 64 millimeter uh, th throttle body and manifold from the Screaming Eagle kit and did a great tuning job. You don't just get this by bolting it in and putting an auto tuner on it. This is gonna take some work to get this nice of a torque curve. And you gotta have that right exhaust pipe on there to get it. That's one motorcycle. Here's another one from another day that they did with the same 30-30 cam. 128 foot-pounds torque, 124 horsepower. But look at this curve. Look with the right pipe. Now, I don't remember. One of them had uh, the Moonshine Pro Stock pipe on it. The other one had the D&D &D on it. But the, this, this instant hit, when you floor it right down here low, 22,500, 2, power goes up unbelievable. It wants to pull your arms off. Now, please understand, you guys, this is... When I say a stock engine, I'm not talking about like you drove it off the showroom floor and pulled it up on the dyno. They only make 80, maybe 85 horsepower like that. But if you want to make 120 horsepower and 130 foot-pounds of torque, you need the right pipe, you need the right cam, and you need a great tuner. Of course, a good throttle body and air cleaner. Now, if you run the stock little plastic manifold and the stock throttle body, the little 55, it will make four or five less horsepower but when you get to really trapping them as much air as this does because of the timing, the 8 and 25 and the 48 and 15, because of that event timing, it has the capability of trapping more air than other engines with other style camshafts. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Now, while I ramble a minute, I'm going to move over here and go with the why this all became important. People ask me every day. I get these messages. Hey, if I put your cam in, do I have to change the pump and the plate? Well, the, the plate, the cam plate, the oil pump and the cam plate, this plate right here, they're buying red ones and blue ones and ones from different companies. And I, if it wasn't designed from 2020 up, I'm going to say that it's not necessarily the best one because I saw some, some red and blue and different companies making oil pumps and cam plates back before there was a good oil pump made and they were selling anodized billet parts instead of a cam plate or an oil pump that would help you. There was an issue with the oil pumps. There was a problem with the stock oil pumps, with the red pumps, the blue pumps, and all of those oil pumps, there was a problem. They had more pressure than they had scavenge. In other words, they had too much supply and not enough return. And uh, oil pump is very, one of the, we only know oil pumps, that we, we think of it as a reason you got to have oil pressure, so we need a big oil pump to give us lots of pressure. But an oil pump in a dry sump, like the Milwaukee 8, it has a dry sump engine. It ne The pump needs to grab all the oil out of the sump and put it back in the tank. And it's just as important for it to have great scavenge properties, great scavenge capability to take all the oil out of the sump and put it back in the pump. Because we only put four quarts in these engines, and once it pumps all of it out into the sump, and the, and the scavenge can't keep up like some of those different colored oil pumps and those billet oil pumps out there cannot keep up. And at some RPM, like at 4,000 RPM for two hours straight on the interstate, you can actually overfill the sump to where it's got the, t the oil tank is empty and the sump is full and the engine will, the crankshaft will start cavitating and beating this oil and whipping it like an egg beater and it will burn your engine up. The, s the return system of your oil pump, the scavenge system, there's several very important channels in the oil pump. And the one that makes all the news is the pressure, high volume, high pressure oil pump. Not important to me or you. You need it to have a return capabilities and you need it to scavenge the oil out of the sump back into the tank so the pump can grab it and put it back in the engine. This plate right here is like the brains. This plate is like the valve body of a racing transmission, like a Power Glide or a Turbo 400. It has a valve body in it. It tells everything what to do, when, and it, and it controls it. This plate right here that comes on a 2020, a 2020 and newer Milwaukee 8 has the right circuitry, the right pressures, and it has the best scavenge I have seen.
Now, somebody's going to be mad at me because I, di I didn't diss on the blue and the reds. I'm just saying the stock 2020 and newer oil pump and plate is better than those ones that are colored. They're selling you anodized colors with billet material rather than a better idea. Just because it's billet, just because it's red, just because it's blue, or just because it's clear anodized does not mean that it's better than a 2020 and newer oil pump. Springs, springs, valve springs. I talked a week or two ago about the, all the springs in the engine. I wanted to tell you, this is one of the most important parts of the engine, this valve spring. It's made out of some wire. It's a roll of wire, it's a coil of wire, and then they coil it on a coiling machine and then they heat treat it, and then it goes through several processes. And when companies want to make money, they buy the cheapest wire and the cheapest process and they end up with the most inexpensive spring and they ship it. And then people like me and you, we get this kind of stuff and the valve springs that they used to run a 300 lift cam and have a little, oh, little spring tester, which is your new Milwaukee 8. There's more people dropping valves, breaking springs with stock valve springs out there with stock camshafts than there are with a well-designed camshaft with stock springs. It's, a, it's like a symphony orchestra. The parts have to, have to get along. It's gotta be like completely synchronized. All the parts need to like each other a lot. The pump, the plate, the valve springs, all that stuff. And the camshaft can make or break your valve springs with the design of the acceleration rates of the lobes. And please remember y'all, the intake valve and the exhaust valve is sitting on the seat. It has to open to full lift as fast as it can. It has to stay there as long as it can. Then it has to come back and slam on the seat as fast as it can. And it has to stay there. And there's not much time for it to happen. So a valve spring has a, a terrible, scary job. It's, if I was a valve spring, I'd, be, I'd cry every night try, hoping I could live because we try our best to break these, and you better be buying some good springs. I sent one of the broken springs to my favorite spring manufacturer one day and for them to look at it, and they said that wire was not made in America, and it had been on a ship for a long, long time, and it was not the right wire. They wouldn't even make a door spring to fit in their shop out of that material that is being sold on the Internet today. So, y'all, just because it's got fancy packages, just because it's got anodized parts to go with it, that doesn't mean that the spring is good enough for your Milwaukee 8. And the best springs in the world, made by PSI, it's a polished wire. Those springs are... They're not guaranteed to last forever, but they're the closest thing to guarantee I've seen in my 40 years of racing is a PSI valve spring. So I am, I, I'm not getting a check from those guys, but I, I have put my career on the line. I've taken big money sponsors, Fortune 200 companies that have paid me money to win races in my NHRA career, my professional career, and I used the PSI springs to do it because... I felt like if they cost $100 more, you can buy the cheapest springs for $200 a set, or you can buy the most expensive springs in the world for $400 a set. But it's your choice to save $200 on a $10,000 engine or to save $200 on a $20,000 project. It's not the right place to save money, in my opinion. Springs. That's a great Tech Talk Tuesday one day to talk to you about what valve springs do and how they, what they have to go through. Also, when you're tuning a car or a motorcycle or an engine and you're running on gasoline and as you're trying to tune it at wide open throttle, it needs to be somewhere around 13 to 1 air-fuel ratio. I'm not talking about E85. I'm not talking about methanol. I'm t and I'm not talking about uh, gas mileage. Because if you're trying to get good mileage and you're trying to just cruise down the road and go as far as you can with your engine happy, smiling, and it's got the timing turned way up, and it's got this turn lean way down to 14.5 or 14.7 to 1. But when you floor it, it's got to burn a lot of hydrocarbons. The air doesn't make the horsepower. The Only the hydrocarbons, are, are, when they're burned, they're converted into energy, which rotates the crankshaft, makes the piston go up and down. But it needs to be near 13 to 1. So when you have your bike on the dyno and a guy is trying to figure out how to tune it, and he needs all these numbers, he needs to know all these numbers before he can tune your motorcycle, the littlest one is 8, and the biggest one is 20. The littlest one is 25 close, and the biggest one's 52. So there's a 
there's a range in there between 25 and 50. It's 25 degrees, and you can put it in one or the other, and you run it, and then it says the air-fuel ratio is too rich or too lean. You go on the laptop, and you change it to where you take away fuel to get it closer to 13 to 1, or you add fuel to get it closer to 13 to 1, and then you get it to run great. I don't know exactly all about this, but I have tuned this cam in an engine a hundred times without ever having to know this. I have tuned this in cam in a hundred different engines without having to know all this. And I've tuned this cam in a hundred engines without having to know all this. The result is this. So if you don't have two wide bands on your Harley, or you don't have eight wide bands on your V8, or you don't have four wide bands on your four cylinder, and you're beating it and beating it and beating it at the racetrack or beating it on the dyno, you're wasting your time, man. It takes forever. If you had one, if you had one O2 sensor on a V8, that means you took the average of all the lean cylinders and all the rich cylinders and averaged 13 to 1. Somebody just wrote me, isn't that still a little lean? Yeah, 12.8 is great. 13.2 is great. But there is one thing that matters. Put it around 13 and it's going to make this much power. Move it to 13.2, and if it makes this much power, 13.2 is right. If you move it to 12.8, and it makes this much power, 12.8 is right. But it's near 13.1. If you can just catch my drift. Do not get married to this. This is what you get married to. When I tell somebody 13.1, that is where you go about. The horsepower is what really matters. Now, if you're part throttle cruising, you're just riding around, you better have the timing advanced way up in there so that it's burning really efficiently and then you better have it leaned out a bunch for just cruising. I'll give you an example on an airplane. When you take off on the airplane, a little two-seater or four-seater, when you take off with it, you push the, the fuel. You go full rich and you floor it and you peel out and then you're going up. And then you reach over there and you grab the fuel knob and you look at the EGT on the dash of the airplane and then you lean it out a quarter, lean it out a quarter, and you're flying at 5,000 feet, and you lean it out, and then it goes, da, 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 and then you turn it back a quarter or half, and the EGT comes back down. They're tuning with the exhaust temperature. That's scary for me for an airplane. A wideband air fuel, I would have it in my airplane if I flew, but I don't fly anymore. Yeah, I do. I just don't fly the plane. I understand it better, but hey, quick story. Back uh, 2006, I had a heart attack. Got stents put in. They told me I was good to go. I was flying a small airplane, a Cessna 172. I was learning. I was taking lessons, and I got my solo license. I also had a CDL. I had a professional pro stock car license, a professional motorcycle license, and I had all that stuff together. And my insurance agent said, hey, man, I can't sell you life insurance unless you get rid of one or two of those things. You got to quit racing. You got to quit driving a pro stock car. You got to quit driving them fast cars or the fast motorcycles. You got to park the 18 wheeler or you got to quit flying and you had a heart attack. So anyway, I wasn't insurable with all that crap going on. Last thing I want to tell you about weight. People talk about how heavy the driver is or the rider. If you got a car that weighs 3000 pounds and you put a 300 guy, 300 pound guy or 300 pound girl or a combo of the two in the car, the car will run whatever it runs, mile an hour, ET, whatever. And if you take the 300 pound guy out and put in a 200 pound guy, it goes a teeny bit quicker and faster. But if you take, it's about 10%. A 3000 pound car with a driver that weighs 300 pounds is about 10%. Get you a motorcycle that weighs about six or 700 pounds, put a 300 pound driver on it. That's 50% of the weight of the vehicle. A 300 pound driver and a 200 pound driver in a motorcycle is night and day. Like one arm goes in the 11s, the other one goes in the 10s. Weight on the motorcycle is huge, y'all. So if you have a motorcycle that goes slow and you weigh 300 pounds and you put a 150 pound person on there, it better go a lot faster. And I know that's common sense, but I just see people don't understand why they can't go in the nines or they can't go in the tens and their bikes going in the elevens or twelves. They think it's easy, but it's hard. You might have a car that goes fast with 300 pound guy in it, but that motorcycle is hard to go fast with 300 pound guy. In it. But if you're going to run against other 300 pound guys, whoop them. But if you're going to run against hundred pound guys, understand, man, you're, you're, you're running with one arm tied behind your back.
shameless ad. Milwaukee eights, twin cams, they all have this compensator ramp that goes in their engines. The stock twin cam ramp cam is very, very tough. It's thick right here and it's hard and it's tough. The twin cams, they don't really break. They smear and they wear out a little bit. But if you buy a Milwaukee eight and it has this in it, the stock one is hard. It's like glass. It's hard, but it is so brittle. I believe if you took a stock one out of your Milwaukee 8, like a 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, took it out of your motorcycle and threw it on the ground, I believe it would fracture it. This, the one we sell, is made out of a billet steel that's used for crankshaft, billet crankshafts. And it is, it's, this is a metal to metal part that's used in our engines. These lugs wear. They smear a little bit. They wear a little bit, they get broken, but it won't break. The reason we built these and the reason we sell these is so they won't break. This is what I call a disposable, wearable item. It wears out like a tire. Now, it won't break. If you wear the loads off of this or you break it, I'll give you a new one free or you can give me all the pieces back and I'll send you money back. I'm just telling you, the stock one, I, I, I don't sell Harleys. And I don't work on Harleys, but I've seen over 100 of them broken. I see them on the internet every day. This is a stock replacement part that will wear. It will score because it's metal to metal. And the last tip about this is I would not use an ATF in my primary because that's made for clutch plate safety and use. And this part here really likes oil. It likes motor oil. A good primary lube is important because there's metal to metal contact going there. Chain and sprockets love oil. ATF is for automatic transmissions. Hey, these are my opinions. Mine. <laughs> this is not the gospel of the internet. I'm not the, the only guy that has opinions or knows. These are just my opinions. I just wanted to tell y'all my opinions and my ideas of the things I've done and run into and i really appreciate you guys yep I, i'm a big fan of schaefer's oil it works great for me I use three different kinds i use transmission oil i use primary oil and i use motor oil uh but i see it's times run out and um i rambled a lot please forgive me for the commercials um i had a nice opportunity to use products that we actually sell instead of uh free ads for somebody else. Why not give myself a free ad? But thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. I get great feedback from y'all. Thank you so much. I get people send me notes and messages, tell me what they want to know about, but um, I have more. I just had to skip over it kind of fast to get a lot in. Send me your questions. Send me what you would like to hear about and send me your comments because they matter. Think of me as an engine on the dyno. I'm looking for feedback so I can give you more performance. Thank you and may God bless y'all. Good night.